I got there in 1965, and of course the uh, the moon program was well along by then. Just four years later, we actually landed right on it. And so I got there a little late. I really wanted to be heavily involved in the, in the lunar uh, program, and uh, but my my timing was off, and uh, so that's why I wasn't directly involved in any way in 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 the uh, the Apollo program. I would have loved to have been, but I was just a little late getting there. Uh, I wound up being involved in space science research. We we studied the uh, uh, the atmosphere at very very high altitudes where the where the uh, satellites all pretty much fly. So we studied that to, to understand the density of the atmosphere and be able to calculate lifetimes for satellites and uh, orbit predictions. You got to you got to know something about the atmosphere up there. So that's what I got wound up getting involved in. And. Um, in in '65, I remember, and, and for several years thereafter, I would come in in the morning in the cafeteria, and there would be all the soon-to-be astronauts seated at the table eating breakfast. I was a friend of uh, John Hobolt here at Langley. John uh, was, uh, a, as I was, a graduate of University of Illinois Aerospace Department, and he went on to get his PhD there. I just uh, got a, a master's degree there, and then showed up here in '65. Of course, John had uh, a real struggle persuading the folks in our agency that the very best way to get to the moon was not the use of a huge monster rocket that would take off from here, land on the moon, and take off from the moon, land back. It was just completely impractical. And uh, But it still took him a struggle to persuade people that the uh, uh, lunar orbit rendezvous technique was the very best. It's, it sounds, when you describe it, it sounds complicated. It does when you you know you describe it, but in fact, uh, the agency looked carefully at all the numbers that uh, Dr. Hobolt came up with to show that it was more efficient and the best way to do it. And uh, uh, even at, at one one presentation he gave, someone in the audience shouted, "Your your numbers lie," because they really didn't believe it. It just seemed too good to be true that you know that you could do all that on uh, and yet save all that weight. But you could. You could save a lot of weight and a lot of fuel and a lot of this and a lot of that. So finally, he he won. He won the day, and uh, that was a grand day for uh, for John. John was very, uh, uh, very, very smart, as you can imagine. It was his PhD in Arrow, and uh, he was uh, uh, also very strong-minded, strong-willed. He had to be. He had to keep because he had to keep fighting. Uh, uh, every presentation he gave, some he wasn't even authorized to give. Sometimes he wasn't authorized to attend a conference at Washington on it, but he, he always did because he knew he was right. He knew he had the numbers. And uh, uh, so he was, uh, and he was a family man. Uh, his wife, uh, his, his wife was very nice. I got a nice letter from, from her after he passed. I had sent her a letter. Uh, I don't know uh, about his the size of his family or anything like that, and I don't know that he spent his whole career at NASA Langley. I'm honestly not sure about that, but he he is in the uh, NASA Langley Hall of Honor, uh, and he is also in incidentally in the Hall of Fame at the University of Illinois. The technology, uh, uh, I mean, we wouldn't probably be sitting in a room like this right now with what, what, what went on then. They had to miniaturize the, the computers, miniaturize everything. And uh, it was a huge challenge and a huge program uh, to be able to do that. Uh, you know, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't take with you some of the monster computers that existed just before the the uh, Apollo era and the space era really began. I mean, the, 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 if you're going to have a computer with you, and you really need a computer with you, and, I mean, you're not flying now. It's gotten so darn complicated. Um, but the, the miniaturization uh, of, uh, the, of the sizes of the computers, uh, and not just computers, the miniaturization of everything, all the systems that they had to miniaturize to cut down on the weight and uh, they succeeded really beyond my imagination. I, I was really amazed that they did as great a job as they did in miniaturizations. But that was crucial uh, to our present society. I mean, so many of the things that we have today are just sort of outgrowth, you know, of that, uh, and outgrowth of some of the technologies that were developed for the space program. So that's my, my biggest takeaway. And, uh, 
and of course the other is the uh, the courage of these these guys to go there uh, anything could have happened you know look at what happened with with our uh, with our space shuttle missions uh, going to the to the moon was even more dangerous and yet they uh, they showed tremendous courage all of them you know in, in doing that 